Hi everyone, today we're going to do Photoshop, your first assignment, no kissing. It's known as in class one. And to begin, you need to open up Photoshop. And this is what Photoshop looks like. There's toolbars that run down the side. There's a menu that runs across the top. You also will have different types of palettes that are laying over here at the right. Um, the one we're gonna concern ourselves with at the beginning is layers. To begin this project, you need to do File, Open, and in the Assets folder that you are given in class or if they're online that you will download, you will go to um, the In-Class Assignments. When you get inside In-Class Assignments, there's a Photoshop folder. If you'll double click inside of there, you will see the 10 assignments that you need to complete for this class. We're going to start with in class number one. I want you to also notice in here that you have step-by-step -step instructions. If you don't want to watch the video, you just want to follow step-by-step -step instructions. They are on the information sheet. And there's also a diagram of what it will look like when you're done. You certainly are at liberty to add and um, manipulate the images in any way that you'd like. We're going to start with opening up fall. This is what fall looks like. Um, it is a, given the extension .tiff, um, in an image editing program like Photoshop, it does not matter what the extension is. Notice that over here on the layer palette, the background is locked. I'm just going to double click, and I'm going to give this a new name, Fall. If you want to manipulate any of the layers, they cannot be locked. That is a quick way of unlocking the layer. Now that it's unlocked, um, one of the first things that you're going to learn how to do is to actually save a document. We're going to go up here and do a file, Save As. The extension given to all Photoshop documents is a .psd. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the format to a .psd. The purpose of doing that is to be able to have all the layers associated with this. We're also going to give this a name. You can call it in class one, your first name, your last name. You can call it no kissing. You're the one that will upload it to Canvas. I'm just going to back up a level to show you that I've put inside your assets folder a Photoshop completed folder where you can put all the documents that you complete. Notice the file name. Also the format is a .psd for Photoshop. And you'll go ahead and hit save. Go ahead and click OK so it maximizes the compatibility. And you'll notice up here on this tab that you have now saved the original document of fall to a document with your name in it. We now are going to add some text. Um, notice on the toolbars, if you wait just a second, you'll have the ability to see um, an actual name for each of these different tools. Also, if you see a right triangle on these tools, it will tell you that you have more options. So if you click on that right triangle, sometimes you have to right click to be able to see it, you'll see other options associated with that tool. That's what a right triangle. We're going to just choose the horizontal type tool. And when we do that, we're go we'll go down on the bridge and we'll just create a rectangle box. Looks like a selection. Notice that you have handles. Um, see-through handles all the way around. It allows you to resize this box any way that you would like. Each time you choose a tool, it will have give you different options that run across the top. If you'll change the font size or font type to any one that you like, also change the size, um, maybe around 36 point would fit well on this. And the color of this, I usually do like a sky blue you can take your slider and move it through all of these different colors to choose a color that would fit. I'm just going to choose a light blue color. Notice here's the hexadecimal code associated with this color. Go ahead and click OK. And you should see a blue color, actually country blue color, um, show up there. We also want this to be centered and we're just going to type in And as you look at the font, 
if it's something that you like, you can keep it. Notice I'm going to select it so that I can show you that at any time I can change this to any font that I want. And you can actually scroll through them and it will give you a look of what it would look like. Um, you choose any font that you want and once you get it looking the way that you want, you're going to go up to the tool bar and choose the first one known as the move tool. It's a four headed arrow and it allows you to move this text anywhere that you'd like. Then we're going to go up to the layer style, layer, layer style, and go ahead and add a drop shadow. This is what makes it stand out, look two dimensional on your Photoshop. So notice over here on your layer palette that you now have two different layers. The most current is laying on top. We're going to add a third layer everyone you'll just click right here, you'll have a third layer. This third layer, we're going to name it, we're going to go ahead and call this sign. We're going to create a wooden sign to hang from this bridge. We're going to go over to the toolbar, grab your marquee tool, and you're going to just go ahead and create a horizontal rectangle as a selection. Notice that it now gives me options of what I want to do. I actually want to add color. So I'm going to go over to the toolbar and I'm going to choose the foreground color. And I'm going to go into my palette and I'm going to choose kind of a wine color. So find kind of the red colors that you, that you would like, kind of a deep red. Go ahead and click OK. Now I'm actually going to change this to my paint bucket tool and I'm going to drop it inside my marquee. If I don't get the color that I really like, I can actually go in here and I can modify my colors to get maybe that darker color that I was looking for. You just click OK, drop the new color. I'm not very particular on colors. You can choose colors and design it any way that you would like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the selection with a control D. It gets rid of the um, selection. I'm also going to go up to the layer, layer menu and add the drop shadow so that my box kind of stands out. The next item that we're going to do is we're actually going to add a filter to make this look like a wooden sign. In order to do that, we're going to go up to the menu and we're going to choose filter. We're going to go into the filter gallery and this is where it gives you the options to do a variety of different types of filters. You can see all the different, the various names of filters and you'll become very familiar with them. We're actually going to go into the texture filter and we're going to choose texturizer. If you notice, look what happens to the wood sign. It now looks like it has a wood grain to it. If I increase the scaling, I can choose the type of wood that I want it to look like. And if I increase the relief, I can make it look weathered, like it would be if it was hanging from a bridge in inclement weather. Go ahead and click OK, and I've now made my sign look like a wooden sign. The filter does not show over here on the layer palette. You'll just have to know what those filters are. You'll start to memorize them as you use it. The next layer, we're going to be on our fourth layer, is we're going to make a chain that hangs from this bridge. In order to do that, we're going to grab our text tool. We're going to just create, and it doesn't matter the font, I just want like an 18 point font. And the color of the chain is going to be kind of a black color. So if you can go into the deep black um, of your colors, or gray, that's kind of what we want for our color here. Now in order to do this, we're just going to create with our text box, just a little box, and we're just going to put the letter zero in there. Okay? I'm actually going to distort this zero by clicking on the move tool, and with it, I'm going to click show transform controls up here below the menu. And when I do, I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to just stretch this chain link is what it's going to look like. On its edge, I'm going to kind of thin it out and stretch it. That looks a little bit more like a link instead of the zero. 
go ahead and click apply the transformation. You can double click inside and then I'm going to click on show transform controls to make that go away. I'm going to use my nudge tool which are your arrow keys on your keypad. You can move them one pixel at a time left, right, up and down. If I look over here I have a zero but that has no meaning to me in Photoshop. I'm going to double click here and I'm just going to change this to link one. There's my first link. Something I don't want to do over and over again but I can actually duplicate the layer. If I right click on any layer and choose duplicate, third from the top, it will come back and say what would you like to name it. I'm going to change it to link two go ahead and click OK. Duplicate layers lay on top of each other so I'm just going to slide up link number two. You can do it with your move tool or you can use your nudge arrows that move up and down. I'm going to duplicate that layer again. Right click, duplicate layer and I'm going to call this link number three. Go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to just nudge so it goes up there perfectly. And I'm going to create one more link. I'm going to right click, duplicate layer. This is link number four. And now I've created a chain link that makes this wooden sign look like it hangs right from the bridge. Notice that I have four different layers from link one to link two. I can actually select all of these layers one at a time by holding on to my control key and select each of them. The purpose of doing this is to actually merge these together so I can just call it a left chain. I'm going to go up here to layer menu and I'm going to click merge layers. There's also a keyboard stroke control E to make that happen. Once I merge these layers together, I no longer have access to them individually. If you think you want to have access to them, then instead of choosing merge layers, you would actually group your layers together. In this instance, we're just going to merge them together. I now only have one link, and I'm going to change this link to left chain. That means it's the left side of the chain. And maybe you could have guessed that now that I have a left chain, I'm going to right click, duplicate this layer, and I'm going to call this right chain. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to slide the right chain over with my move tool, and I've got myself a bridge hanging, or a link to the my bridge. The last thing that I want you to do on this is to actually add text onto our wooden sign. I'm going to grab your text tool. I don't have to create a layer to do that because it's text. I just grab the T and I create a box. Remember I can maneuver and make my box bigger once it comes over by grabbing any of the see-through handles on any of the sides to fit on there. At this point I determine how big I want it to be. I'm going to choose a 30 point. I think that will fit nicely. Maybe a little bit smaller. You can see the size of it by the eye beam. Maybe 24 point makes it a little bit smaller. I also want this to be a mustard yellow. Instead of actually going into my color picker, I can go over here to my um, actual document with an eyedropper and I can choose a part of this tree that is mustard yellow. Once I do so, it will make that selection, identify the hexadecimal color. I'll go ahead and click OK. At this point, I'm just going to put the words no kissing on my sign. If I don't like that those are the words that are there, or the font that I like, you can change the words because I it has no meaning to me what you put on your sign. You can change it to anything that you would like, um, but you can choose any font that you like. and. It, it makes no difference to me. Some of you may like to be on your move tool and do show transform controls and this allows you to make things a little bit elongated, maybe put them closer together just by um, double clicking inside you can um, make and stretch things using the show transform controls. I'm going to nudge this perfectly on my sign 
and then I'm going to get rid of my show transform controls. I'm going to add a drop shadow. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. The last thing I want you to do with this one is actually make this so it kind of has cracks in it so it looks weathered sitting on the wood sign. You are unable to do that to something that is labeled a text layer. It needs to have the same box like this that tells me it's a graphic. So we're going to use um, layer, rasterize this layer. The word rasterize means convert to an image. We just did. By converting this to an image, I no longer have access to the specific characters of No Kissing. It now is one particular image. But I can now go to Filter, and I can go to Texture, and I can add Crackle. When I go inside of here, it will allow it to crack. I can increase the spacing of the cracking, the depth of the cracking, and also the brightness of the cracking. So play around with the different variables of each of the different types of um, filters that are available to you. We are done with in class number one. We'll just do a file save. That will save the PSD. And you also need to upload a JPEG. This will just be a quick representation of the document that I'll be able to see without layers. Then you'll also upload your PSD so I can see the construction of your in class number one. If you'll do another save as, make sure you always save it first as a PSD, then save it as a JPEG. This will flatten your layers so you no longer will be able to see these. Go ahead and hit save. You can use the same name and then always choose the quality 12 which is the maximum quality. You now have a PSD and a JPEG that you will upload in Canvas to complete this, this document. And then you will move forward with in class number two.